I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. and appreciate you spending some time with us. I have to, today uh, uh, Suzanne Puckett. I appreciate you coming. You're, we heard from your husband Thank you recently, and uh, it's nice for you to kind of maybe share a little bit more about what happened to when when he shared with you this strange concept of about the church and everything but, but i guess before we get to that tell us where you were born and and what's your background a little bit well i was born in massachusetts my dad was in the air force and oh, my okay. you know we'd moved around a lot and yeah. um, born in massachusetts then they moved to alabama where the brother just younger than me was born and then my dad got out of the military at that time. Okay. And my both of my parents are from Minnesota, so they loved the South and the warmth. And, <laughs> Compared and to so Minnesota. they stayed there. Oh, yeah. yeah. My mother was like, I'm not going back to Minnesota, <laughs> you know, to live. Yeah. Um, so they ended up staying in the South. So I've been in the South since I was probably six years old, I think. So. Well, that's neat. Uh, yeah. And now you're actually moving out here to Utah. Is that true? Yes, is that yes. news or is that okay to say? It's okay. <laughs> yeah. We, we actually closed on a house today. So we bought Did a house really? and we're, we're here and uh, yeah, yeah, just looking for well, it's an exciting, our new life here in yeah, Utah. It's an exciting so. journey you've been on. And so, but you were, your, your folks were also converts. I they were. Warrens were converts and yes. yours are too. Yes. Um, my parents, um, my mom, joined well she encountered the mormon missionaries um i th i think that i was two or three years old oh. and um they converted to the they, church yeah they, they converted to the church and and yeah. you know mother became very active my dad not so he's he's you know a member of record he was right. baptized but he he doesn't go very often but yeah. um he he believes in the mormon church i believe and yeah. um you know, my all of my siblings and yeah. Did family. they go to the temple, your folks? And my parents never went to the never temple. Went, no, okay. no, not together. My mom has had her endowment, but uh, yeah. they didn't go to the okay. temple together. But you're active as a young. You're baptized oh, at eight yes. and very active. Yes, and yes. My mom was the. Um, I, I remember her first calling was like a primary president or something, really? and so she and had you jumped in with both feet, and we all were very uh, active members. Yeah. Uh, went through primary. Um, young women's. Wow. I, I did um, have seminary. It, being in the South like we were, our uh, ward that we were in was very large so area geographically. geographically. Yeah. And so um, we did what they called uh, home study. Or for seminary. For seminary, okay. right. So we would meet on Sunday afternoon oh. with the teacher and she would give us like her assignments for the week and we would turn in the last week's assignments, oh. you know. And, and um, so I was able to graduate from seminary. Mm -hmm. I think I only had three years, though. Yeah. I can't remember. Well, that's been too long. <laughs> they graduate three and four year people, yeah, I guess. So. But, so just never any question that the church was true, right? No, or never, any? never any question. I, I remember distinctly um, when I, my best friend and I at the time went 
to get our patriarchal blessings together. Yeah, yeah. And then we ended up being roommates at BYU. Yeah, you come so, out here and go so to I BYU. Came out, came out here, went to BYU, yeah, Utah. And took religion classes there, did. I did. I took a Book of Mormon class that, yeah. that year that I was here. Uh, loved it. Yeah. Loved everything any, about it. Again, any question no, about no, doctrine or not anything? Not at all. Did I you was, run into anything that was strange or? Not. I, I just, I believe. They kind of keep us sheltered, don't they? <laughs> yeah. I, I just, I, you know, it was, it was true and I didn't need yeah. to. Yeah. So yeah. where do you meet Warren? Where did you two meet? Well, we met um, in the old South Atlanta ward when um, his family moved to the Atlanta area when he was about 10. And my parents, my dad um, was an air traffic controller at Atlanta Hartsfield oh, Airport. Okay. And um, we moved there in 72 so I was 11 yeah and we went to the same ward oh, I so see. Oh, okay. we were youth yeah and then you know teenagers together yeah. and it's so it's funny because his family and my family our parents were really close friends and so oh. we would do a lot of things family together um, yeah. there's a an attraction in Atlanta called um, Stone Mountain Park and, sure. and we would go there almost every weekend wow. at, you know his family and our family yeah. and picnic and you know we just uh, had a any attraction at that point as young people <laughs> well not not early on but yeah. I always kind of had a thing for him I think oh, or so. <laughs> so yeah and uh, when it, when I became a senior in high school we went to different high schools although we lived just a few miles apart from each other, yeah. um, but uh, I asked him to take me to my senior prom, and he oh. he did. He never went to any of his proms at his school, but okay. he took me to my senior prom, oh. and uh, we we just said it. We had a good time, and you know we dated kind of loosely, but it was never yeah. never anything too romantic yeah. back then. So. Do you think you had a good testimony of the church? And oh yes, I knew that. Joseph Smith was a prophet of God. I of knew Mormon the Book of Mormon was true. was true. I knew it was. I yeah. had no questions. I had no It's, it's funny when we say we know because right. how, how, what are we knowing, basing that knowledge on? But, right. but I know what you're saying. We just know the church is true. Well, and those, and those cliche answers like, with every fiber of my being, yes. I know it's true. Yeah. And you know, how do you, you know, you can't yeah. do And anything that. that happens just reinforces your right. testimony more. When, oh, yes. You know, yes. When BYU wins a game or something, oh, it's because yeah. the church is true. I loved something. the church. I loved everything about it. I loved yeah. the programs and yeah. I you know I had been many callings from when I was a, a teenager you know being the like young women's uh, or the president of my young in women's classes class. and stuff yeah. and then um, when I became an adult I was young women's president teachers right? I was teachers young women's and president and counselor many times primary president counselors teacher yeah. um, just at stake I was in the stake Young Women's Presidency, um, just very active, very and just never very any, faithful. Nothing could could upset that apple cart until no, Warren until. comes along. <laughs> and it's you're telling right. me, you were telling me that it was on a ride home. Is uh, it, it from, was from well, at, at the time I was um, I had been an early morning seminary teacher and for three and a half years. For, or yes, so, yeah. I was. I yeah. had I had taught um, the the Old Test. I mean the New Testament, the Book of Mormon. The Doctrine and Covenants and Pearl of Great Price, and I was halfway through the Old Testament, teaching the Old Testament. And it was around December, beginning of January. Um, we were driving home from church one yeah. Sunday afternoon, and we were having a conversation. And, and this was shortly, I mean, you know, it was like six months after his brother had passed away. And, and uh, you know, I knew that he was having a hard time Struggling dealing with, with that yeah. event, yeah. but I didn't realize that he was questioning his faith and yeah. the church or anything. I had, I really it had, just hadn't I was, it right, I was, I was so busy. I was, I, I was working full time. I, I'm a nurse and so I was working full time and I was doing, having early morning seminary. So in the evening when I get home, I'd have to study for the next morning's class. Oh. And so, you know, I was kind of disconnected from him and his struggles, I think a little mm -hmm. bit. And, uh, I, um, we were, we were discussing something and he said something. I was like, well, you, you sound like you don't believe in the church anymore. And he just looked at me straight in the eye and said, I don't. And then that talk about your world caving in. Yeah. Uh, very, very difficult. And, you know, of course, we get home and we're 
discussing and was he was it anything specific or was he trying to share with you things that he no he hadn't he, had, he had not or? really he hadn't shared anything with me that he had learned until when he revealed right. that he yeah. no longer believed in the church yeah. and I was like well what have you been doing you know and yeah. and he told me that he had you know gone online and had been looking at different um, you know aspects of gospel doctrine that he had not understood earlier yeah. in his life and you know he was trying to come to to terms or understand and and um, it was you know it was, it was a shocking <laughs> shocking yes very shocking I, that's yeah. the only yeah. word to use because I it was and then as I as he became more vocal about the things that he found and um, he would ask me questions you know well what do you believe about or what do you think about that and I'm like you know, I'm not talking about this. I don't want to. You just didn't even want to. Deal I didn't with even it. want to talk now, about it. That's the normal with reaction it. of of people, I think, in the church, right? Is yeah. Just I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Because well, you're afraid it's going to rub off or or open or, up something that you can't answer. Yeah. Open up a, a question in your own mind that you can't. Are we insecure enough in our faith? Uh, I mean, it's based on feelings and our. Do we have a kind of an underlying feeling that maybe we can be swayed? I think so. I, I don't know I, exactly I, what that is either, but yeah. I've lost friends and family over this too. Right. And they won't talk about it. They, they won't. Even, they, they don't even want to know what I've, right. I've learned. And Nobody will say, well, what happened? Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. Nobody. Just very, very rare. Yeah, they, they assume they know. Yeah. What has occurred, you know, and usually and you it can't involves really teach me anything Satan and has don't. led you astray, right. or you know, yeah. the, the devil has gotten into your brain. Or whatever. Yeah, you've lost the spirit. Yes, you've, you've lost the spirit. That's yeah, definitely that's a been, big one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, so again, from your perspective of of a husband who's challenging the church, do you start praying more? Do you read oh, more? Yes. Do you try to talk him out of what he's doing, or do you look at stuff? What Mostly w with us, and, and I guess that that's not a good reflection on me, but I, I was just, I was so angry. Oh, no, I, I was that's very so normal. angry, and I, I just wanted, you know. I, I just, mean, here's your eternal marriage. Yes, he, he, has, he has destroyed our eternal marriage. He's, he's almost destroyed our family. He's trying to destroy my faith. His is already gone. So he's trying to destroy mine in my head, you know. Sure, is, I know. And, um, and he... He's, in my opinion, you know, he was being led by dark forces and not oh, sure. being led of God. So, yeah. you know, how could he be doing this? Yeah. What is he, you know? And I was so angry and so devastated. It was like, and I, I've told other people this, it was like somebody just pulled the rug out from under me. Oh, sure. I mean, my everything came crashing down. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and it, it, it was... I mean, it's your whole life. What do you do? <laughs> How do you yeah. respond? You know, what do you, uh, you know, and, and my, my thing, my sister and I went to the temple because I, in, in the very early time of this happening, probably January, February, um, we went to the temple. And it was, fun it was funny how, how God works through things because there was a woman that I had been really closely associated with in the Young Women's Program, in the Stake Young Women's Program, when I was in that. And um, the first question she asked me when I said, well, like, well, Warren's leaving the church, and she said, well, are you going to divorce him? Oh, really? And, I, you know, well, at the time we had been married for 22, 23 years, and I was like, mm -hmm. it was kind of like a slap in the face, what? And then it got me thinking, am I going to divorce my husband? Over this. over this, yeah, and um, so, and then as time went on, we would have terrible argument. It was just really was it a tough a time dark, in the marriage? Very dark time. We very, kind of glossed over that in his yes, visit. Yes, it was. With it, me, was it was way tough. more. Uh, it's yeah. funny because our daughter-in-law just last week she, she, we were talking a little bit, or a couple of weeks ago, we were talking to them a little bit about that time and what happened. And she looked to my son, her husband, and said, why didn't you tell me any of this? And he goes, I had no idea. But they live in Idaho, and we oh, were in Georgia at the time. They see. didn't have any idea. Yeah. They didn't see any of it. Nobody, all were, of our children were grown and gone. You Nobody really sharing. No, this, no, no, yeah. because it was so, it yeah. was so awful. Yeah. 
and basically I just, I, I gave up my early morning seminary class and I quit going to church because it was so hard to go to oh. a little branch and, and sit there by what, myself. Yeah, and they knew what had happened. Right, around. yeah, and, and to have, you know, people will look at you with that, oh, you know, so yeah. sad, so sorry for you, and, and I, I just couldn't deal with it. I, I, and, I, and that was, to me, that was a God thing, too, because I had to be away from it. For just a... For a length of time, in order to start to be able to see what was being presented, and and it wasn't that Warren was trying to shove anything down my throat or anything. He would leave things laying out. Yeah, you told you mentioned that he'd left little scriptures here. He would. Was it like grace and yeah, Bible verses and um, the the ones that you had read and probably taught before in your seminary? Oh yeah. But, but had never, you know, as, the there are none so of, blind as those that will not see, you know, yeah. or cannot see. Isn't that true? And, uh, I, you know, I couldn't see them for what they really said. I, I didn't, I couldn't read the word, or I didn't read the word and understand it like I have since my eyes have been opened. Yeah. And that is so true. I mean, yeah. you know, Christ even says, you know, their eyes haven't been opened. Yeah. And they, and it is so real yeah. because it is, it is really something that happens to you when your eyes are opened to the truth. And it really is something, isn't it? It is. Now, this took amazing. you three to four years four of years. a journey with four him years. being questioning. Mm-hmm. And what did you do during that time? And then what happened to you? Well, at first, it was just the first year was really, really the hardest. You know, and we would fight a lot and everything. And then um, finally, I came to the point where, okay, we're done with the fighting, you know, I've decided I'm going to stay with him, Great. and we're going to just let things lie for a little while, but during that time, you know, God was working with my heart, um, and, and about, it was about right at four years, four and a little bit years after all the initial stuff happened, yeah. um, it was Easter time, yeah. and I told him, I said, you know, I want to go to church for Easter. I've been to church my whole life at Easter, sure. and you know, and I, I really felt like I, I knew Jesus oh, sure. as far as I did know him as, oh, a, as an LDS person. Sure. Um, you know, I, I didn't know him like I do now, but I, um, I wanted to go to church. And he said, well, we, you know, do you want to go to the branch, the Mormon church? And I said, no, I don't want to go there. Oh, okay. Um, I just it just didn't feel right yeah. and so you know he talked about his friend his dear friend that right. he worked with that, that invited they invited him to, to church this. right okay. um, he said well you know Lee and Lucretia have been inviting us to go to church with them Want you want to go to church now, with had them? he had his experience by then? he had already had his experience and he, had he shared that with you well it was funny because the night that that happened <laughs> he came home and it was quite late by the time he got home and I you know I yeah. I was in the bedroom, and I was sitting on the bed, and, and he came running up the stairs all happy and smiling and opened the door, hi, you know, and I was like, what's wrong with you? You look like a fool. <laughs> I was so mad. I was, ooh, I was like killing mad that night yeah. that he had gone and done, you know, this uh, new Christ- church Christian thing, thing. Yeah. yeah, without me, and, and yeah. um it was, it's laughable now to look back on it, but I remember just being so angry with him and, and yeah. you know, how could you be doing that? You're supposed to be looking to see whether or not the Mormon church is true, yeah. not some other something. So you, you know. go to this Easter service, do you? Yes, and, and it, was, um, it was beautiful in that when we walked in, they were singing about Jesus. Isn't they that were amazing? praying about Jesus. Yeah. You know, to him and and praying for things, you know, f- you know, I mean it was just it was really and the program was beautiful. Yeah. Everything about it was the Easter story from the Bible. It was just beautiful music and everything about it and I we were standing in the balcony of the church cuz he's like we won't go down in the bottom. We'll stay up at the top. And um I just, I remember standing up when they started first singing the songs and just tears just running down my just face. Just a message just like, you'd never You know, it was, it was like hope. Yeah. There was hope. And um, 
we went home and, and he's like, you know, yeah, I know it's a lot different than what we've ever experienced you know, before. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, but it was wonderful. It was beautiful. Oh, I bet he was thrilled. Well, he didn't, you know, he yeah. was like kind of taken aback, I think. One but, step at a time here. Yeah, yeah. It was like, okay, don't push, don't push. <laughs> but um, they had mentioned that there was going to be a, a speaker coming to their church on that following Friday night. So that oh, was Sunday, okay. yeah. and so six days, five days later, Friday. And um, about Wednesday or Thursday night, I told him, I said, well, I want to go to that Friday night, because the, the speaker was going to talk about covenants. Oh. Um, and I had just come out of teaching in the Old Testament for seminary, sure. and, and, you know, I thought I knew something about covenants. and. I wanted to hear Can what he had to say. To this. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to hear what he had to say, and, I, and so we went that Friday night, and he was talking about you know Abraham covenanting with God, yeah. and the part in the Bible, and I'm not sure where it is, where he you know cut the animal parts in half and he laid them on either side, and then the spirit of God walked through, yeah. and that's when he made the covenant with Abraham and and. Uh, and it was just so, it was like, oh, wow, you know, and it was like the word was kind of opening up to me as he was reading it. Oh, my goodness. And I remember he said um, at the end of his lesson or whatever, he said, I just feel that there's somebody here. And, you know, you think you've heard it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I've watched televangelists yeah. and stuff. Oh, there's somebody, somebody here. ready to receive God or whatever. You know, just a grain of salt. <laughs> take it like, you know, it's not, but he, he said, there's somebody here who, who wants to give their heart to God. And, and I remember standing up, and I was, I was just crying. And I turned to Warren, and I said, he's talking about me. Wow. And, and he's like, well, go up, because he was just praying for whoever it was, you know, open their heart, Lord, and have them. And I, I went up to, you know, they had like a, a stand, a, right. just a two steps up to the podium, I guess, whatever. And I went up there, and he just said something to the effect, are you ready to receive Jesus into your life or something like that? And, and I remember in my head and in my, in my heart, I was the, the very distinct thoughts, I am a sinner. Really? I can't. I can't save myself. You really thought that? I did. I, I really did. I need you, Jesus, to save me. I'm, I believe that you died on the cross for me, and I need to be forgiven. And it was like, well, it was my own personal miracle. It, it was like this, just this, love washed over me Cleansing, unbelievable yeah. feeling of it's okay you know you're mine yeah i just felt like i was wrapped in arms and i it was the most amazing thing i have never been the same since and i i tell him and other people there's the some, next morning some. the the grass was greener the sky was bluer. I would open the Word, and whatever I read, it was like I had seen it for the first time. You'd never seen it before. Like I'd I never seen it before. And it just opened up to me in just the most miraculous way. And I, I was born again. I had, my heart was changed that day. It, you know how, how the Word says it. He will replace your stony heart with a heart of flesh. Yeah. That happened to me that night. And, and I, I just, every day since then, not a day goes by that I don't thank God for that experience, for open. changing me yeah. so completely, for loving me so much, because it's all about His love. He loves all of His creation that yeah. same way and and all you have to do is accept him yeah. and what he did he's on just the cross. asked us to believe yeah just believe yeah and it's so easy to believe but we're so reluctant to do it and yeah. i don't know why did you 
uh, obviously from what you're saying, you just didn't understand grace before. Did I did you? not. I did not. Yeah. You know, the, the Book of Mormon verse, you know, you're saved by grace after yeah, all you, you can, can do. Yeah. You know, I, I just felt like I had to I had to do my part. Sure. And I've even had people tell me, well, you have to do your part. Yeah. Even, you know, since that time. Well, you no, have to earn your way. There's nothing, there's nothing I can do yeah. that's going to, that's going to save me. What a joyous message that is. It, it is the most amazing thing. I know in John it says that Jesus answers the question, what are the works of God? And he says the work of God is to believe, to believe. on his son. Me, right. you know, to believe on me. Yeah. Yeah. So never quite the same. Had you ever been in a Christian church before? I had never. Uh -huh. Well, I, I remember as a child, I'd gone to, to church with a friend of mine. Her name was Tina, and that was years ago when I lived in Valdosta, Georgia. And um, it was very strange. And, you know, as a child, it was weird to me, you know, because I'd been in the LDS church. And so as an adult, no, never been in another another denomination church. You yeah. know, or, well, so how was this sharing this with family, with your kids? It, it was difficult. Um, with the children, um, not as much because it's, it's funny, they, they love us and they accept us. Oh, that's wonderful. For, you know, whatever we believe. I, they don't believe how can, we believe. Can you talk about religion at all or can you? Discuss not in the beginning, not really, but now should. more. Oh. It's it's opening the the, the communication is yeah. opening more, well, and I think that's because watch us. this maybe and and have a sense of your sincerity and right. the, like, the love you have. This is what's so interesting is we've turned our lives to Christ. Right. What could be better than that? Right. You know, and trusting Him completely. What could right. be better? I yeah. I I don't know. I I think that they just look at it. I. I think the the rest of the family, those who are more, you know, LDS yeah. or whatever, look at it as you're rejecting them, not accepting Christ. It's uh, not. Yeah. It's more of a you're you're pushing you're us pushing away us away. And, you're, yeah. You know, not that you have right. come into a new relationship with Jesus. It's more yeah. you're re rejecting us and our beliefs. Um, it's it's been it's been difficult with many family members um, uh -huh. other than the children the children our children have been um, for the most part you know I I, I, I just guess they love us because they oh, that's wonderful. they have it been keeps those lines of yeah they've been more open. open they they don't believe like we do but they but they can see now that you're not having that contention and right that, well that they stuff see the change well it, just the change in Warren and I just yeah. the change that has come about in in yeah. us yeah. and it's not that we're you know trying to be different or whatever we are different yes <laughs> so, we are yeah well our time is gone oh wow that is so fun. does go quickly doesn't yes, it yes it does thanks suzanne for coming Thank and sharing you. i hope this helps many people I we'll see so. you again on the ex-mormon files